COP26 finalized last Saturday, about the time we were on this podcast, and they came out with a 10-page climate plaque, pact, which uh, I think Greta Thunberg summed up even before. She called it blah, blah, blah. Words, but not the actions we need. So the voluntary pledges coming out of this uh, uh, climate conference based on what the countries are saying will still lead us to a 2.7 degrees Celsius rise in global warming, which is a climate disaster. I mean, that is just Armageddon kind of situation, particularly when a lot of people don't recognize this destruction of bread baskets, meaning food shortages, famine, massive refugees, and then political and violent conflict over dwindling resources. That's the world we're headed to, and that's what the world leaders basically signed off on with their climate plan. Uh, the U.S. pledge of cutting emissions by 50% by 2030 is frankly worthless. Uh, the policies, and I'll talk about Build Back Better in a minute, but they ain't going to come nowhere clear, close to that. Uh, the International Energy Agency has said the world can build no new fossil fuel infrastructure if it wants to cap warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is the goal. We're at 1.1 now. But Biden, you know, is letting 20 new pipelines, including Line 3, which is the equivalent of 45 coal plants that will uh, transport uh, Alberta tar sands oil to be refined, and also three liquid, liquid nit natural gas uh, export facilities. Um, these are just, you know, you build that infrastructure and then the investors want to make money off it for decades when we need to be getting out of the fossil fuels. Another thing, the International Energy Agency, which is not a radical group, uh, said 1.5 degrees Celsius requires cutting coal by 69 percent, oil by 31 percent, and gas by 28 percent by 2030. That's globally. But just in the U.S., Fossil fuel production, which grew by 85% since 2000, is, uh, and that's due to the fracking boom, uh, the, the current oil and gas company plans will double current production by 2030. So we're going in the opposite direction. And then at the conference, uh, climate activists had hoped that they would commit to phasing out coal. Instead, India and China insisted with the U.S. backing them that they say phase down coal instead of phase out coal, which means the U.S. really wants to keep using coal. I'll get to that in a minute. There was also a big push by the Global South to get the climate reparations, the Green Investment Fund fully funded, and for the Global North, the historic uh, carbon polluters to recognize their obligation. And as I've said, you know, paying reparations is paying off a debt. It's also an investment in the habitability of the planet for all of us. But the U.S. remains adamantly opposed to taking on any firm commitment. And so coming back from Glasgow and COP26, the Conference of the Parties, the 26th one, on Wednesday, the Biden administration uh, had the largest auction of offshore oil and gas drilling leases in U.S. history. That was in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the area where these companies could buy leases was the size of New Mexico. And a court did order Biden to go ahead with that, but he had options, including more legal court remedies, or he could have just used uh, provisions of the National Environmental Policy Act to uh, hold back the drilling, just like Obama did with the Arctic and Atlantic drilling uh, several years ago. But the Biden administration just seems to have rolled over on this one. And then the next day, Biden nominated a man named Brad Crabtree to be the Department of Energy's Assistant Secretary for Fossil Fuel Energy and Carbon Management. And Crabtree is a carbon capture and storage and coal industry advocate. He's an advisor to the National Coal Council and director of the Carbon Capture Coalition, which is a lobby of fossil fuel companies utilities that want to keep using coal. So it's not surprising that the U.S. backed India and China in saying we're going to phase down coal rather than phase it out. 
we are in deep trouble with the climate.